After Han noticed the dangerous intent in a certain someone gaze, her expression darkened a little. Are you kidding me? Using you is not all right, and not using you is also not all right. Living is just too hard. No, that's not it. The first person I thought of was you. Of course, I wanted my boyfriend to help me with this kind of thing, but I was just worried you won't believe me like Harley. And tried to explain herself for some reason. Darren could not seem to focus and just looked at her in a daze. And got goosebumps from being stared at like this. Huh? What? Why are you looking at me like that? Darren seemed to have realized the reason, but he felt like it was impossible. If I wrote his bros and he calmed down, it's nothing. Under his breath, he muttered subconsciously, You couldn't have. Huh? Anne was confused and had not heard what Darren said. I couldn't, I couldn't have done what? Uh, don't talk about these things. We haven't seen each other for so long. Don't you miss me? And gazed at a certain someone trying to captivate him with a look. Right, as she was about to get intimate with absence makes the heart grow fonder as her excuse. Footsteps rang out from behind them. Mommy! Anne instantly straightened up. <coughs> Flynn, you finish washing up? Mommy will come sleep with you in a bit. Flynn, huh. Darren, who had shortened his trip with so much difficulty and had to spend the night in his room alone. Anne, Flynn is still young. Sleeping alone can be scary. Darren, no matter what happened in the past, she always rushed to sleep with him periodically and glanced at the adult, then the child. Her head was spinning and finally she came up with a solution. How about we sleep together? I'm really too smart. Darren, Flynn, the adult and the child glanced at each other and agreed silently. In the end, the three slept together on the same bed. To create the image of being a family of three, and place the little fella between her and Darren. Anne, Flynn, do you want mommy to tell you a bedtime story? Flynn, yes. Anne, what does Flynn want to hear? Flynn, the story mommy told yesterday night. Darren. Anne had also put him to sleep that way before. Anne nodded. <laughs> The story from yesterday night saw the little red riding hood and the big bad wolf on right and lightly coughed, then began a story. <clears throat> Long ago, there was an adorable young maiden. Anyone who saw her loved her and the one who loved her the most was a maternal grandmother. One time, a grandmother gave the young maiden a velvet little red hood. From then on, the young maiden refused to wear any other hood and thus everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood didn't know the wolf was a, bad, was a bad guy and because of this she told the wolf that she was going to the forest to visit her grandmother. The wolf began to scheme in his heart, this little thing is young and tender. She must taste better than the old hag. I need to come up with a plan so they are both unable to escape from my grasp. When Darren had that, he looked at Anne. Anne had not noticed Darren gaze and continued. Grandma, why is your mouth so big and scary? Little red riding hood, the better to eat you with once. The wolf replied. He jumped from the bed and swallowed the little red riding hood into his stomach. Darren. Anne told the story twice and finally the little fella fell asleep. After letting out a sigh of relief, she finally noticed Darren mixed case. Ha, huh, what is it? Darren, it is not the same. Anne, what's not the same? Darren, the version you told me is not the same. 
not the same. Of course, they are not the same. The one I told Daryl before was something I blurred how to flirt with him and suddenly coughed. <coughs> the one I told Flynn was the normal version. The one I told you was an amazing version because it was my own special creation. It's one of a kind. Darren, little red riding hood eating the big bad wolf was pretty special. The little fella was like a furry animal when he moved a bit and snuggled right into Aunt's hand. His little hand tightly clung onto her sleeve as he slept peacefully. Anne was stunned by his cuteness. Huh? So adorable. Darren, look, isn't he so cute and adorable? In order to make Darren accept Flynn, Anne directly entered frenetic advertising mode and carefully handed the little fella over to Darren. After the little fella was shifted into a different position, he frowned but quickly went back to sleep. Darren relaxed as he looked at the little fella in his arm. It was hard to verbally explain the feeling that erupted from suddenly having the little boy beside him. So cute, so adorable, huh? such an obedient and understanding child. When I saw this child before, I even thought that such a lovable little boy could only exist if we combined our chins. Say, how could his parents bear to abandon him? <laughs> and sighed. When Aunt said such a lovable little boy could only exist if we combine our genes, Darren observed the little fella beside him but made no indication of whether he agreed or not. Darren, who came to you for help? And social network wasn't big and the few people she knew were incapable of this. Aunt's heart went sour. An idiot, but I must be even more stupid because I actually agreed to help him. Didn't I mention to you before how I found several temporary actors who could fight fairly well to act as soldiers saved by the black widow? I held them a favor, so I reluctantly agreed to help. Darren's expression turned ugly. This girl used to be afraid of everything. Merely seeing blood was enough to send her into shock, but now her guts were growing bigger than ever. It all started to change during the incident when they were in country B. Back then, a method of handling and dealing with matters changed day after day. She was changing and now she even adopted a child. Fortunately, he encountered even more astonishing events before and this was seemingly small matter in comparison. Anne continued to speak. Consider you being his daddy as a bonus that I'm giving you. When his real parents come back, I will consider my work done and leave. But right now, <coughs> let's view this as a practice. Practice. Darren's expression darkened slightly. Late at night, Anne and the little fella were both sleeping. The two of them were letting out peaceful breaths on this quiet night. At that moment, his cell phone vibrated. Darren got up lately and took his phone to the balcony. Hello, Master Ronald and his people escaped overseas. We had some people following them, but once they reached Europe, we suddenly lost sight of them. Ronald must have some other power backing him up. Darren's expression didn't change. It was as though he already expected this. If Ronald was working alone, he won't have the pulse, nor would he have the capability to gather forces overseas. The person on the phone continued reporting. The person who saved Anne didn't come up with any suspicious in our investigation he w should be the backup to miss hans mercenaries master what should we do with ronald the person on the phone awaited orders darren went silent then finally said help me investigate a person after hanging up darren quietly stood beneath the night sky his expression continuously changing before he returned to china the older internal department was a mess with endless disputes and in fighting between branches. But even the older family complicated branches 
there was still the old madame and the second elder Ronald to keep everything stabilized. They weren't at the point where the older family was about to fall into ruin. In the shadows, there was definitely someone scheming and this person was very familiar with the older family. That's, that was why, even though they never made appearances themselves, they could use borrowed power to strike and cause the older family internal department to fight amongst themselves. Then they could reap the rewards without doing anything. This person seemed definitely wasn't to help Ronald to achieve power, but to rather to get the benefits in the process, then eventually win over the entire older family. If this if Darren had not come back in time to take charge, the older family would likely become non existent. After he returned to the older family, the entire older family became an impregnable fortress that no one could even touch. So they ended up using older family future mistress as an excuse to stir up controversies. This person must have a large connection to the older family and it was even possible that they could be hiding in the older family internal department the next morning. When Anne opened her eyes, she could see Flynn beside her and Darren, who was on the other far side of bed. This adult and child duo, it's practically a feast for the eyes. If she really had such a handsome husband and son, she would definitely wake up from laughing about her own dream. Anne was continuing to admire the beautiful scene when her phone began to ring. Ding, ding, ding nameless knee. Famous Sanchez is Flynn doing all right over there begging for a picture and what did you say? The wind is too loud I didn't hear anything nameless knee. He clearly sent a message right. Nameless knee automatically sent a red pocket over. Anne happily opened the pocket and realized her mood today wasn't bad so she took her phone and casually took a photo for Flynn for nameless knee. In the picture the early morning sunlight was shining through the window onto Flynn, who was sleeping blissfully in his furry cartoon pajamas. His little head was leaning into Darren's arm and to the side, Anne was taking a selfie with one hand while poking the little fella's dimple with the other. The photo was quickly sent over and Nameless Nick giggled as he saved it. <laughs> He really admired Han, who dared to poke the little devil's face. But after looking at the photo in more detail, Nameless Nee thought something was strange. The person sleeping beside Flynn doesn't appear to be Han, Nameless Nee. Damn, who is the man beside Flynn? Although Anne had not captured Darren's face, Nameless Nee could naturally see that someone was sleeping beside Flynn and from the body shape he could tell it was a man and bullshit who could it be besides Flynn's daddy nameless name huh Flynn's daddy nameless name stared at his phone for a while before he finally replied back nameless name where did you find him how much per day and how much per how much your head this is my man, is not an actor. Nameless me. Huh. Flynn believed you, and of course you think he's as stupid as you. Nameless me. Famous Sanchez, you are really too reliable. You're so more reliable than my sister, who ran away from home, and that brother in law doesn't even know he has a son. And was speechless. Let's not talk about anyone else, okay? Your old family isn't reliable. After finishing up on waxing, Anne decidedly changed Nameless Nee nickname to Nihilo Hoop Hit. Meanwhile, inside an underground bar in a town in Northern Europe, Nameless Nee was looking at Flynn's photo. After saying that, the little fella had adjusted well. He could finally let out a breath of relief. 
It was mainly because he received another life-saving pass, namely Steve immediately emailed the photo over to his father. After he sent the photo, his phone began to ring. Ding, ding, ding. His family personally added him on WeChat. Namely, Steve was so scared that his hand trembled. He quickly clicked accept. After his WeChat account was blocked, he had not re-added, but now the Empress Dogger herself added him back. Nameless name. Mom, did you see Flynn is doing well over there? He's eating well and sleeping well. I told you the person I found was really reliable. The couple is really nice. Nameless name worked hard to type that out. After what seemed to be forever, there was finally a reply. Do you have a pra picture of that girl? When Nameless Nee saw his mother's reply, he was dumbfounded. She wants Aunt's picture. Nameless Nee thought about it and decided to ask Mom, what, what do you need Miss Sanchez's photo for? Afterwards, Nameless Nee phone rang and it was his family Empress Dogga calling. He could not help but feel overwhelmed as he answered. Nameless Nee carefully answered the call. Hello, Mom. What is it? Don't you feel like she really resembles our worryless? The person on the phone spoke in a haggard tone. Nameless Nee felt speechless but replied, "This, There is a small resemblance. When I saw her for the first time, I could not help looking at her a few more times. But